Today I'm going to be covering fleet compositions, or I guess task force compositions now. If you're newer coming back to Hearts of Iron 4 wondering why you can't make a death stack anymore and combine all your fleets into one massive fleet, well first off, your fuel will go extremely fast. Second off, you can only do a mission in a single sea zone now. There are about 7 different types of ships you can make inside of Hearts of Iron 4 that I'll be working with today. Submarines, destroyers, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. I'll also link a video where I was doing a couple days ago some naval designs and stuff like that so you can get an idea of how to design some of these ships correctly like I have here and that will also help you perform the missions that you're going to have these guys working on a little bit easier. Also one last thing before we actually get into this video, since there are so many different ways to design ships now, some of these groups might not work for you. It just depends kind of on what your naval doctrine is and all these other different things that go into account and currently there is no meta for multiplayer or really anything so today I'm just going to show you fleet compositions that have worked for me or task force compositions that I've used that work for me in multiplayer so far. Here we have our first two task forces. The first one is just called true U-boats, the second one is search and destroy convoy rating. Now for true U-boats you want to usually have a minimum of 20 submarines and a max of 50. The reason you want at least 20 is because that is a good number to be able to get a decent amount of naval kind of mission efficiency and a good amount of detection in a sea zone really anywhere in the world. But the closer to 50 you can get, the higher your detection is going to be in that area and you'll be able to sink a lot more convoys. But you don't really want to go over 50 because then you can just make another fleet and then that way they can keep getting in different battles and so on. So really for submarines you want a max of 50 but minimum of 20. Now for the second group down here, you're probably wondering why is there destroyers with submarines. The idea behind this is you don't have as many submarines to make stacks of 50 or you want a lot of kind of smaller subgroups or something like that. The reason you have a destroyer in here is because they have way better engines than a submarine. The way that Hearts of Iron works, at least now, is when you go into a naval zone and you have high, I guess, engine speed compared to ships with low engine speed, the destroyers will detect ships much more often than the submarines will. So if you're going to be going this route, you're going to want probably I would say a 5 to 1 submarine to destroyer ratio. For every 5 subs, you want one destroyer, if that's your goal with this little group here. Pers uh, personally, I would recommend getting submarines only though, so you can kind of you know, just maximize production on that. For our next task force group, template things, I guess fleet compositions, whatever you want to call them, we have three for convoy escort missions. The first one here is for basically just doing a basic convoy escort. This one here is for mostly an anti-aircraft, an anti-destroyer, or an anti-submarine kind of task force deal for convoy escort. And this one here is if you're going to be escorting convoys and expecting small naval engagements, possibly with enemy fleets and so on. So for the first one here, you're going to want a minimum of 5 destroyers and a max of 15. This way you can actually deploy them in large areas, especially since now you can only send them in one zone each. So a good number would be between about 5 to 15 max for this first one. Now for these destroyers, I would recommend having one AA gun and one depth charge and one sonar on all these destroyers that you're going to be using in this specific first one. For the second one, this is an AA convoy escort. Whenever you're in the Pacific and the Japanese Navy is dealt with, you might be worrying about the use of kamikazes, especially multiplayer. This is a good fleet in that case. The basics of this is going to be five destroyers minimum with depth charges and sonar, and then one to four light cruisers with AA on them. Me personally, I've made these kind of Atlanta kind of variant anti-aircraft cruisers with destroyers that have good sonar, good depth charges, and even torpedoes on them. For this one here though, you want minimum of 5 destroyers, max of 15, light cruisers, minimum of 1, max of 4. Now for this third one down here, this is going to be the same idea, 5 destroyers minimum to a max of 15. I just have 10 here for the sake of it so you can see you don't have to do the max every single time. Then I have 4 light AA cruisers and then I have 4 heavy cruisers. Realistically though, you want somewhere probably in the mindset of about... I would say one to two heavy cruisers, but you can do a max of four if you're really feeling kind of worried about the enemy having naval superiority in certain areas like in the Pacific, or if you are going in the Atlantic, you can probably get away with only two. So here we have a patrol task force. This is exactly what it sounds like. It is only a task force made to patrol zones to kind of look for enemy fleets or 
you know, look and see if certain areas are clear of enemy ships present, just that kind of idea is the mindset behind this kind of fleet right here. Now, whenever you're using this, you're going to want usually a minimum of five destroyers and a max of about 10, two to four light cruisers. It doesn't matter if they're AA cruisers or not. I just kind of mixed two Cleveland class cruisers with two Atlanta class cruisers and then either one to two heavy cruisers or one battle cruiser. So it's entirely up to you on how to design this around that idea. But I would prefer if you can, or I would recommend if you can, you should probably get one battle cruiser instead of the two heavy cruisers to keep this fleet a little bit smaller, but also pretty good at its job of patrolling. Now for the main part that everybody probably wants to see is how to set up carrier task forces. So for our very first one, which is our main carrier task force, you want to have a minimum of four aircraft carriers, four to eight light cruisers, four to eight light cruisers specifically designed for AA support, six to eight heavy cruisers, 30 to 45 destroyers, and one to four battleships. The reason you want to have all that with this, first off, with all the light cruisers you're going to have, you're going to have a huge amount of AA, especially with the ones specifically designed for AA support. You shouldn't really have to worry about enemy fleets doing that much. So if you also have battleships with these, more specifically if you can get super heavy battleships, this fleet will be very good. Next one here, we have a light carrier task force. For this, you want to have a minimum of one aircraft carrier and a max of two. You want to have between four to eight light cruisers, two to four light cruisers that are specifically designed for AA. Then you want to have five to eight heavy cruisers and 24 to 30 destroyers, somewhere in that ballpark. I would just recommend 24 though. That's kind of a sweet spot I found with this little light carrier task force. It's not really made for main engagements, but more of going up against enemy countries that might still have a decent sized navy like for example uh, Germany if you're playing in multiplayer and they haven't wasted their navy or if the UK and Italian navies have fought each other and they're both kind of wiped out but the Italian navy is still alive in some fashion this might be what you need kind of to go into there then we have an escort carrier task force now I use light carriers i use light escort carriers is something i designed i'm just going to go ahead and show you this one really quick here for an example uh, this is a little light escort carrier the reason i have these is they're really cheap to build compared to the normal carriers they only have like one deck space on them but they're not that bad they've got a good amount of you know hp they're just kind of there to be an aircraft carrier to get some planes in the bow they're not as expensive as a normal carrier so if you're going to be doing that little fleet at the bottom there for an escort carrier and you want to do that route i would recommend one to two of the escort carriers that I just showed you, six to 10 of the light cruisers with AAA or a double uh, AA support pretty much. You wanna have at least six to 10 of the light cruisers with AA, 20 to 30 destroyers. Again, sweet spot is 20 though for destroyers and then two to four battleships, I'd recommend four. Now for our final part of this video and it is going to be the battleship task force. Now. For a light battleship task force, you really mainly want to use battle cruisers because they're a lot cheaper and all this other stuff. So for a light battleship task force, you want one to four battle cruisers, one to two battleships. You want eight light cruisers specifically designed to be anti-aircraft support. Then you want another four to eight light cruisers that are just light cruisers. Then you want two to four heavy cruisers and then 30 destroyers. I don't know why this is 45. I think I made a mistake earlier, but this should be 30 right here. So you can have 30, 245, that's up to you, but uh, just make sure they have some depth charges on them along with all of the other destroyers I've shown you in this video. Just make sure they're kind of set up, if I didn't specify, a little bit towards the anti-other ship with torpedo and you know anti-sub with depth charges kind of areas. So next we have a medium battleship battle group. So for this one, you only need one to two battle cruisers, two to four battleships, 10 light cruisers specifically designed for AA, six to 10 regular light cruisers. Then you want three to four heavy cruisers and at least minimum of 40 destroyers, very bare minimum. Then for the very last one we have, it is our heavy battleship task force. This one you wanna have at least a minimum of six to eight battleships, 16, 16 light cruisers with anti-aircraft support in them, like that are actually set up to be anti-aircraft support. You need at least 16 of those. Then you need another 10 to 16 regular light cruisers, six to eight heavy cruisers, and then minimum of 50 destroyers. 
So I know a lot of this sounds really complicated, like way over the top, but this is probably going to be the best fleet templates I can at least get for you guys right now because there is no established meta, you know, and all that stuff. Now, if you guys are playing as a smaller country and you can't get even the very basic minimum ship numbers for some reason, like the convoy escorts or the other stuff, another tip to do is look at the task forces that I have gone over with you guys, point out the ones you really like, write them down, use a calculator to kind of remove ships to keep the same ideas there like if i said you need a minimum of four battleships and say this fleet right here well you can't get those four battleships and you can't build the light cruisers or the uh battle cruisers well if you have to you could take this down to two and then take two of the heavy cruisers away take away you know half of this i mean just kind of take half away from a lot of these templates if you're going to be a small nation maybe as australia or uh maybe even india you know, whoever you're playing as, if you have to remove too many ships, just divide it by two. And then if you have to divide it again, you know, just keep doing that until you have enough of a capacity of production to actually build that type of template. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I've been working on this for quite a while for the last few days. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome.